Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial. Um, today we are going to be talking about removing the backgrounds of the different things that you might have as a PNG file. So this is really, really helpful for a lot of different things. I use this all the time for my Cricut, but I've also used this a ton for the Glowforge. And so I'm gonna show you guys two different examples of projects where you might want to remove the backgrounds and you might want to uh, trace the bitmap. So let's go ahead and get started. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna file and import whatever image that I wanted to. So I just downloaded these two off the internet, but these will be really good for explanatory purposes. So this first one is something that you might commonly get where I actually had somebody recently that said, hey, I would love my recipe engraved on a cutting board and gave it to me like this. And I was like, oh great, I'm sure she doesn't want the lines on there. I don't know exactly what to do, but this was actually a super easy fix. I didn't think it was actually going to work this well, but it did. So what you want to do is this image, first of all, is not really going to work very well in Glowforge anyway. So in order to really to get this to work, um, we have to basically make it a path. That's kind of the big thing in Glowforge or in Inkscape is you always want to make it a path. And so we have our document. So let's imagine this is a recipe or something else that you want to engrave. But again, you don't want it to look like notebook paper. You want to just have the handwriting of the person. So the big thing is to go to path and then trace bitmap. Now, this is like my number one thing is always tracing the bitmap. I love tracing bitmap just because there's so many things that you can do with it. Um, so we'll talk about that a little bit. Now, the standard threshold you will probably have is 0.45. I always start with that with brightness cutoff. Um, I usually click, click this button. I sometimes do color quantification if I need to, but most of the time brightness cutoff works for me, especially with most projects for the Glowforge. Um, so you can do some of these other steps, but I would say just start with brightness cutoff because honestly, that's going to work best with most of your images. So there's a few things down here. You can smooth things out so we can check and uncheck that and you guys can kind of see the difference there. Stack scans, I usually like to do that. And the big one that I always love to do is remove background. This is really, really huge for me because this helps really make the image crisp, clean. And this is pretty much what I really am wanting with the Glowforge most of the time. And if you have a Cricut, this also helps it to make it a perfect like Cricut image as well. So if you we click all of these different things and you hit OK, what you will end up seeing is if you move this off, you will notice that this is the original and this is your modified. Now, obviously it's not perfect. There's obviously some things that could be better, but this is when you can kind of mess around with some of the different settings. So this time we'll click smooth and then we'll hit okay. And again, not quite as great. You can try different other things. So you can, I sometimes mess around with these different settings and say, hey, does this make it any better? Am I happier with this particular version? You can make it a little bit darker. Hey, am I happier with this particular version? Uh, but then sometimes you might start seeing the lines and things like that. And so you can kind of mess around and try to figure out what the best setting is for you with some of these other types of things. So I usually mess around with the brightness uh, cutoff. Now, if you, you make it too dark, it'll just turn the whole image dark and that's not what you really want. So let's say theoretically that this first one was the one that I want. I usually end up going back and deleting this image, but we'll leave this up because I wanna show you guys one other thing that I sometimes like to do for various different reasons. So inverting the image. I've heard that some people do this, especially um, if you've seen any of those custom night lights. A lot of times people say that in order to really have the light shine in the places that you want it to shine, you actually need to invert the image and not put it in its true form. So if we hit invert image and we still have remove background on there and we hit okay, this basically creates, and I would probably, let's decrease the threshold again to kind of our standard. So if we hit that invert image and hit okay, sorry, make sure you're always clicking on that and then hit okay. Then you will see this is actually just the same type of thing except it's inverted. So maybe you would want that for whatever reason. This could be really helpful if let's say you want the letters raised and everything else engraved down. That could be really helpful. So inverting the image is really easy in um, Inkscape as well just with this type of project. Now let's delete all of these things and I'll show you guys what it looks like with another type of image. So that's with more with writing. 
here's with more of an image. So I just did the Florida Gators um, symbol. Now this is copyrighted, so I wouldn't really do this normally unless it's for personal use, but for our personal project, for our tutorial, this will be a fine. So what I would do is again, path to trace bitmap. I like to have it standard 0.45. I like to remove background, smooth and stacks. I like to have on. Um, sometimes I do multiple scans, but honestly, this isn't too big of a deal. I'm going to unclick invert image. We'll show that again in a second. And then for a Cricut or for a Glowforge for the main effect that I would typically want, I hit okay on this and then you move it off. And then that's a pretty decent image. Now, maybe you don't want these types of lines. Maybe these are either too little or too much or something like that. Again, you might want to mess around with some of the different settings and you might want to make the brightness cutoff a little bit lower. And okay. And maybe that's more what you're looking for. Or maybe for whatever reason, you want it to be a little bit higher. Like I said, I would mess around with this. It's kind of interesting to see all the different ways that it can really transform your image. So maybe that's more what you're looking for if you don't want the whole outline, if that's easier for you to work with. So whatever it is that you are kind of looking for, um, you can kind of mess around with these settings. You can also do this, which would be inverting the image. And maybe you'd have something like this. Or again, you could decrease your thresholds. And then maybe for whatever reason, you might have that image. And that's my, maybe what more what you're looking for. So there's lots of different ways to get this variation for you to make signs, for you to use these images. So most images, PNG images, can be transformed using the trace bitmap function. So if you are looking for any of these different sources to really look for a lot of these commercial free images, I love Pixabay. So I'll show you guys a few of the ones that I like. So I really like Pixabay, which is this. It is tons and tons and tons of commercial free images. And a lot of them actually are like clip arty, or you can even work with some of these different photos and you don't have to pay for any of them, which is awesome. Um, there's also a lot of these different like public vectors domain. There's a lot of like, if you type in royalty free or commercial free um, images, a lot of times these will come up. So I would encourage you guys to use these first because you don't have to pay for them. They are free and you can use this to really hone in and practice your skills and create some of your own SVG files. So I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions about anything, let me know. But removing the background, tracing the bitmap, these are super helpful skills when going forward with making some Glowforge SVGs yourself.